and their volatility often have important repercussions on international trade, the balance of payment and overall economic performance. The first aspect of the relationship between exchange rates and trade relates to the exchange rate volatility. The basic argument for which an increase in exchange rate volatility would result in lower international trade is that there are risk and transactions cost associated with variability in the exchange rate and these reduces the incentives to trade. The findings of the economic literature on this issue have evolved in the last few decades. While early studies found adverse effect of exchange rate volatility on trade subsequent studies report very small impacts. More recently, the use of refined quantitative methods resulted in more skepticism about casualty of short term exchange rate volatility on international trade. The relationship between the two variables is most likely driven by underlining long term policy credibility rather than the short term casualty. In addition, any relation between volatility and international trade could be driven by reverse casualty in which trade flows help stabilize the real exchange rate fluctuations thus reducing the exchange rate volatility. The real exchange rate is the critical variable in determining the capital account. As we shall see this is because the real exchange rate is the relative price of goods across countries. Hence. Changes in the real exchange rate affect the competitiveness of traded goods. We shall in the end also see the possibility when depreciation worsens the trade balance. Section 2 discusses the definition. Section 3 explains the real and nominal exchange rates and the relation between them. And Section 4 discusses the summary. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the definition of basic concepts like real and nominal exchange rates, understand the difference between real and nominal exchange rates, understand the relationship between real exchange rate and trade balance, derive the Marshall Lerner condition, know about the J curve. In this section, we will examine the difference between the real exchange rate and the nominal exchange rate how it enters the balance of trade and the goods market. The nominal exchange rate is the relative price of the currency of the two countries. Consider two countries, USA and India. Their respective currencies are dollar and rupees. If the exchange rate called nominal exchange rate is for 60 rupees, then it implies that one can exchange one dollar for rupees 60 in the world financial markets. Here one currency, say dollar, is priced for another currency, rupee. In other words, the nominal exchange rate is the ratio of relative price of the currency of the two countries. The real exchange rate, on the other hand, is the ratio of the foreign price to the domestic price of the goods. The ratio is measured in the same currency. For example, consider the price of a given basket of goods, burger and cola. Then the numerator would be foreign price and denominator would be the domestic price in the ratio and this would be multiplied by the nominal exchange rate. In other words, it would mean capital R is equals to E into PF by PD where R is the real exchange rate, E is the nominal exchange rate, PF is the foreign prices and PD is the domestic prices of the basket of goods. Take for example rupee and dollar, E is the rupee price of dollar. Consider for example US and India, India is investment of and US is a foreign country. Let E the nominal exchange rate be rupees 60 for one dollar. Also suppose one burger is costing rupees 60 in India and one dollar in US. Then our ratio PF by PD would be rupees 60 divided by one. In this case the real exchange rate would be R is equals to E into PF by PD which would be equals to R equals to 60 by 1 into 1 by 60 which is equals to 1. This shows that the currency are at purchasing power parity. If the real exchange rate rises above 1 that implies that goods US abroad are more expensive than the goods in India and vice versa. Thus the real exchange rate measures the relative purchasing power of the two currencies.
moving on to the discussion of the real exchange rate and trade balance the fundamental four sector identity is given by y is equals to c plus i plus g plus nx where y refers to income c refers to consumption i refers to investment g refers to government spending and nx represents net exports the term nx accounts for domestic spending on foreign goods and foreign spending on domestic goods when foreigner purchase our goods goods produced by the domestic country nx is a component of the total demand for our goods thus nx is equals to x minus m nx is also called trade balance the net exports thus depend on exports and imports of the goods the demand for domestic goods by foreigner depends on the foreign income and the exchange rate particularly the real exchange rate an increase in foreign income increases the demand for exports and on increase in the real exchange rate that is real depreciation increases the demand for exports this happens so as to demand shifts from foreign goods to domestic goods thus x is equals to function of yf comma r the demand for imports by us depends on y and the real exchange rate that is m is equals to a function of y comma r thus nx can be written as nx is equals to function of y comma yf comma r equation implies that first a rise in domestic income increases imports and thus worsen the trade balance nx second a rise in foreign income increases the exports and thus improves the trade balance and third an increase in the real exchange rate that is a real depreciation by the home country improves the trade balance we are interested in the third result the same result can also be seen by diagram consider two countries us and india us is a foreign country and india is home country the respective currencies are dollar and rupees on the vertical axis we measure the exchange rate rupee in terms of dollars and on the horizontal axis we measure the quantity of dollar the indian demand for dollars is given by d dollar and supply by s dollar let the exchange rate be given by rupees 2 per 1 dollar that is r is equals to rupees 2 divided by 1 dollar at this exchange rate there is a deficit ab in india a 20% depreciation of the rupee from r1 rupees 2 by 1 dollar to r2 is equals to rupees 2.40 by 1 dollar would completely eliminate the deficit as at this exchange rate the quantity of demanded of dollars is equal to the quantity supplied of dollars however this elimination of deficit depends on the elasticities of the demand and supply curves if instead the supply and demand curve the marshall lerner condition states that if the sum of the elasticities of demand for imports and demand for exports must be greater than 1 the greater the amount by which the sum of these two elasticities exceed 1 the greater is the improvement in the indian balance of trade for a given depreciation in this section we derive the well known marshall lerner condition consider current account balances nx is equals to cab which is equals to value of exports minus value of imports which is equals to ex into epf by pd minus im into epf by pd comma yd this is the marshall lerner condition the ml condition states that if the current account is initially zero 
a real currency depreciation causes a current account surplus if the sum of relative price elasticities of export and import demand exceeds 1. Now, we examine the possibility that a depreciation may worsen the trade balance. The trade balance NX can be written as NX is equals to X minus E into PF by P into Q, where X denotes the foreign demand for our goods, X and Q denotes imports. Then the value of our imports in terms of domestic goods can be written as E into PF by P into Q. Let there be an exchange depreciation. Then there exist two effects. One, volume effects and two, price effect. The volume effects occur to the volume of exports and imports. The volume of exports should increase as the domestic goods are cheaper and the volume of imports should decrease because imports are expensive. The price effects occur as the relative price of imports increases. The same volume of imports is now more expensive and the total spending measured in terms of the domestic currency increases. Thus, we observe that the trade balance worsen due to the price effect but it improves due to the volume effects. The situation depends on the two effects. Which effect is stronger? If the price effect outweighs the volume effect, then depreciation worsens the trade balance and vice versa. Empirically, it has been found that volume effect within a year and quite small and do not outweigh the price effect. But the long term volume effect are substantial and observed that a country's current account worsens. Worsens immediately after a real currency depreciation and starts to improve only some months later. This behavior is described as J curve as is seen in the diagram. The above figure describes the J curve on the vertical axis we measure current account and on the horizontal axis we measure time. The J curve describes the time lag with which a real currency depreciation improves the current account. The point A shows that the real depreciation takes place and J curve starts and point B depicts the end of the J curve. The more from point A to point B takes more than six months but less than a year. Now, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. The nominal exchange rate is the relative price of the currencies of the two countries. The real exchange rate is the ratio of the foreign prices to the domestic prices of the goods. The Marshall-Lerner condition states that a real currency depreciation leads to a positive or surplus trade balance if the sum of relative price elasticities of export and import demand exceeds 1. Empirically, it has been found that volume effect within a year and quite small and do not outweigh the price effect. But the long term volume effect are substantial and observed that a country's current account worsens. However, a depreciation may worsen the trade balance. This depends on the strength of the volume effect and the price effect. J curve effect occurs when a country's trade balance initially worsens following a devaluation or depreciation of its currency. The trade balance eventually improves to better levels compared to before devaluation.